Okay, guys. Once again, it's an opportunity to meet with you on my channel. Now, our uh, focus for this particular video is about financial literacy. Okay. Many people are working. Many people have worked, but they did not know how to use their income, their earnings, and so they were not able to enjoy life. Let me put it this way, okay? So my focus right now is to share with you some element of financial literacy, okay? Understanding how financial, the financial world works, or understanding how money works. And so financial literacy is simply knowing how to make good use of money, how to multiply money, and how to, yeah, make good use of money. And so in this particular encounter with you, I'm going to show you 15 points about financial literacy, okay? Now, the first point says that retirement does not mean not working. It simply means we can survive for the unforeseeable future. Either working or not working, it simply means having freedom while being able to afford anything. And so when you talk about um, retirement, it doesn't mean not working, but it means that with the accumulation that we've made, with the investment that we've made, even if we are not working, we can still live a decent life. That is the principle or the focus of retirement. And so this is the time we have to prepare towards retirement. And then we have to also make you sure that even after retirement, when we retire from um, global institutions, government institutions, we still have the resources to work on our own. Okay, now point two says that be flexible. Keep an open mind and learn. Intelligence solves problems and produces money. Money with that financial intelligence is money soon gone. So once again, financial literacy is about learning about how money works. And so be patient. Try to learn to increase your financial intelligence. And then the intelligence will help you to solve problems. Money without financial intelligence is money soon gone. That is where you see somebody winning a lot, winning a bet, but within two, three days or even a year, that huge sums of money is gone. That person doesn't have financial intelligence. And so if you want to create wealth, if you want to be wealthy, if you want to be rich, it's very important you put interest in the um, literacy aspect of finance, that is financial literacy. Okay, so point three also says that it is not how much money you make, it is how much money you keep and how many generations will keep it. And so your, uh, the, the quantity or the amount of your income today is not important. It is important only if you are able to keep more, if you, if you are able to save more. And so the amount you are getting is not important. What you are saving, what you are investing, what you are keeping for future generations, that is where the importance comes. Okay. And so example is lottery workers they are always poor because when they win the lottery they are not able to plan for the good usage of the money okay the fourth point also says that if you want to be rich you must first be financially literate if you want to be rich you must first be financially literate yes it also points to the same point you can't be rich you can't have money without knowing how money works and so it's very important you learn financial literacy. Once again, you don't have to go to the class, you don't have to go to the lecture hall in order to make money, in order to learn the principle of making money or investing. You can do that by buying books. These are some of the books I have with me. This is um, from uh, Robert Kiyosaki, um, Cash Flow Quadrant, Cash Flow Quadrant, okay? Money Flow Quadrant. We have four quadrants. We have four quadrants. That talks about how money comes into you and then how money leaves from you. And so this cash flow quadrant, this is also from Napoleon Hill, which also says that you can work your own miracle. So, and then this is also from Robert Kyo Saki. Once again, I love his books, so I have more only that I cannot bring more books here. This also talks about guides to investing. Okay, that's the focus. So buy books, read them on your own, at your spare time, on your leisure time. This is one of the best ways of learning financial literacy. It's not everything that you can learn from a classroom. Now, um, the fifth point says that 
know the difference between asset and liability. Most people struggle financially because they do not know the difference between asset and liability. Now, an asset is something that puts money in your pocket, okay? And then a liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. And so when you work and you get your first pay, your second pay, your second income, what do you use that money for? Do you go and buy something that will take money always out of you? Or you buy or invest in something that will help bring more money into you? So if you want to uh, create wealth, you have to learn to focus on asset. That is income generating asset. Okay. The sixth point also says that an unintelligent adult always feels it is demeaning to pay attention to simplistic definition. This is very simple. Okay. Those who are not intelligent, they think that everything should be huge. Everything should be big. Everything should be out of this world okay but it is not so in terms of literacy financial literacy no pay attention to simple things that is where the foundation starts if you know the simplest that's where you can build on so do that and then let's go the seventh point also says that the rich are rich because they are more literate in different areas than most people who struggle financially and so if you want to create a world it's very important to uh, uh, learn more, okay? Somebody who knows construction, somebody who knows um, accounting, and somebody who knows a uh, business management. That person is uh, easier and faster to become wealthy than somebody who is also all, all, um, only interested or knows about construction. And so irrespective of your background, do well to learn more and expand your knowledge. That is where you can jump from um, you can jump from one career to the other. So let's do that. Now, the eighth point also says that cash flow is a flow or movement of cash. I've said it earlier. Now, if you want to create wealth and you don't understand cash flow, then you are in a big trouble. You should be able to understand cash flow. What comes into you, what moves out of you, okay? It's also... Uh, takes out to asset and liabilities so do well to understand that learn more about that and then let's know how you are putting these things into perspective now let me give you a simple illustration uh, about cash flow now let me read it for you cash flow pattern for a middle class or a poor person okay cash flow pattern for a middle class or a poor person job income see you go to job you got the income then you spend the income on taxes mortgages rent food fixed expenses clothing fun and transportation okay these are all luxuries then it goes to income generating asset now the principle here is that those within the uh, poor class or the middle class when they go to work they get income they spend their income on things that do not generate income before they think of investing. Now, the opposite, which is cash flow party for a wealthy person, or for the rich, okay? Job, income, investing, okay? Income generating asset before they go to what is left is what they spend on those uh, luxury. So when you work and you get your income, the next most important thing is to focus pushing your income on income generating asset. You can read more on this line, income generating asset, yes. So this is the difference between the poor and the rich with respect to cash flow. Okay. Now, number nine says that some rich people are not school educated. But financially educated and are successful as a result so there is a difference between a school education and financial education okay you can be educated in the classroom in the lecture hall but financially you are poor that is why or oh, that is the reason why you see some so-called PhD holders fighting with the government for salary increment tell me it's not true okay 
if you're a PhD holder and you think that you are more educated, you should be able to create your own income without forcing the government. You get me right. Don't be angry, but it's the truth. And so there's a difference. If you want to create wealth, if you want to uh, live in the realm of the world, then you should be able to understand financial literacy and put it into practice. Yes, understanding it is different. Putting it into practice is also different. So that is it. And then um, number 10, an intelligent person hires people who are more intelligent than him.